So please welcome to the stage Dave Berghuis. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. So I will repeat my name uh, myself because there's a really Dutch name and some people have a little bit hard time with the <laughs> sounds. So it's uh, Dave Borghuis. And officially my name is even Dave Borghuis, ook genaamd Otto Borg, but I don't bother you with that. So. Um, so I want to start with an, a little history. So on 12 May 2017, there was some, some guy, um, he gets messages and uh, something is going on with uh, cryptoware. And this uh, a security researcher um, got a copy of the virus that was going on. And he was uh, kind of trying to find out what's going on. So he uh, yeah, disassembled that and looked what's inside. And he noticed that uh, somewhere in the software there was a, uh, a site called, uh, with this not to pronounce name, um, and he was wondering, hmm, what does this site do? So he registered that site and with, uh, with the aim so I can see what's going in and going out and maybe I can do something that with that. Uh, and to his own surprise, uh, the virus, the cryptoware, there's some sites here, Thank you. Um, stopped uh, spreading out. So he accidentally uh, stopped the uh, cryptoware to spread out because he was curious what's, what's, what's going on and what's, what's happening. So he was kind of an accidental hero. Um, later on, I'm going to explain a little bit about the mindset of hackers and yeah, why, why is that yeah, real common sense for hackers to do that. So my name is Dave Borghuis. Uh, some people may know me about uh, the Wi-Fi complaint. I uh, already filed several years ago about Wi-Fi tracking in Enschede. It's still going on, so the jury uh, uh, has to be a legal case. Um, um, and that has to start, hopefully, this year. Uh, we will see what's going to happen. Um, I'm founder of Hackspace uh, Tech Lab. I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about it late, later. Um, software developer uh, for web, de uh, web uh, application without, uh, within a uh, company. Um, and I also find the demo scene uh, very active, uh, very nice. And the demo scene is that people make a program that shows real-time graphics and music and all kind of things. And they do that still for the Commodore 64, for the Amiga, all kind of um, yeah, nice um, old machines. Um, and, and I'm nerd geek. I don't know what, what the official term for me would be. Um, but I like technology, so that's the part of it. Um, first, a little bit about definitions. What is an hacker? Uh, you have the so-called cyber hackers. Um, and that is uh, the hackers that is uh, more into the technical uh, part. So there's a software developer there. He, uh, I asked if he was a de uh, developer, or no, I was. If he's a hacker, he said, nah, I don't know. <laughs> um, but you have s uh, several shades of a hacker. So um, in, in this case, most uh, shades are, the, you, you have the good guys and the bad guys, the white hat hacker and the black hat hacker. And the, white guy, the good guys uh, do security research, uh, try to protect uh, the, the uh, computers and stuff like that. The evil guys uh, yeah, do, do the things like the ransom, uh, uh, ransomware, or try to hack into a computer to extract some money somehow. So, um, and now also with uh, the war going on, uh, some people, some hackers try to uh, disable some infrastructure so that's also a little bit uh, black hat uh, hacking. Um, yeah, and the media uh, kind of run, uh, took the name hacker and run with it. So every time you uh, uh, turn on the TV and something happens on the computer security front, they say a hacker hacked in the computer or a hacker did this, a hacker did do that. Um, so I'm not fully agree with the term hacker, uh, to be honest. Uh, I think that should be a cracker. So uh, someone that has criminal intent uh, to break in the computer 
and do some um, yeah, e evil stuff with it, uh, so, some per that person should be called a cracker. Um, and I'm not only one the, that finds that, there's many per persons, especially in the computer security uh, side, um, they, they also find, yeah, maybe you should use another name. Uh, it's told many times, but uh, the media doesn't listen to the hackers, of course. <laughs> So they keep on uh, uh, using the name hacker. Um, and if, uh, according to this hacker, uh, th this definition, a hacker is yeah kind of person that is uh, very good with technology. So, uh, in my opinion, a hacker is someone who does uh, solve pro pro problems in a creative way, and that doesn't even involve a computer, to my opinion. So if you have an, uh, uh, buy IKEA stuff, a cast or cupboard or whatever, and you make some uh, alterations, yeah, you could also consider that as an as an hack. Uh, so hacking for me is very broad, very, yeah. Um, I want to explain a few hackers where the meaning comes from, and it's from the late 60s. Uh, there was uh, in the MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Uh, they have a train club there. It was already uh, founded a long time ago. Um, but by the time the computers were introduced, they think, hey, that's a kind of ni nice thing to control our uh, train wheel station and to control what trains should go where and that's that kind of things. Uh, so they were very interested in computers and everything involved with computers. So this is kind of the trains they used, and um, oh yeah, and this is the kind of computer they used. Uh, so they are a little bit big old computers, uh, but there's the foundation of hackers and hacker culture. Uh, what is a good hacker? What's an ethical hacker? Uh, what you should do? What you do, shouldn't do? Uh, it's, co it's original from there. Um, and nowadays you have the hacker manifest and some other hacker uh, ethics, uh, and that's yeah you can probably trace it back to that time. So, who knows what this is? It's kind kind of a hint upstairs there. <laughs> but uh, who's going to be the hacker behind this? Hmm? Almost. Yeah. So Steve Jobs is also very important, but st I see Steve Jobs more as the, per uh, the commercial person uh, behind it. And uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Wozniak is more uh, about how, how to create it, how to design it. So you can consider him as uh, one of the first uh, hardware hackers. And he was also involved in the home computer club uh, in uh, San Francisco. Um, he was kind of sharing knowledge and uh, sp uh, sharing what he know about how to make something like that. And um, so he was kind of uh, one of the first uh, hackers. Does someone know what this is? See one head. Nikin? Two? Not more? Okay. So this is about uh, Richard Stallman. And Richard Stallman is kind of the yeah, inventor of open source. Uh, can explain a little bit uh, more about it later, uh, but uh, in, in essence, you're gonna share the program you're gonna create, uh, so someone else doesn't have to create recreate the same software. And someone working as this, yeah, two the same persons again. <laughs> <laughs> I think you two guys are hackers. <laughs> um, so then, this is another hint. Ah, here, okay. <laughs> okay, it's about uh, Linux, uh, and Linux is the maker of the Linux kernel, and Linux is kind of, uh, of is an operating system, uh, but no, most people don't know they already use it. So uh, I think on all, all mobile phones is uh, linked somewhere, uh, the, the bottom uh, layer. Uh, but maybe on your washing machine, your media box, uh, your uh, car, if it is advanced enough, um, so most of that kind of uh, devices use Linux as an, um, yeah basic infrastructure and build their own so uh, companies build their own software on top of that. So uh, it's a uh, very important person.
and someone already knows where I'm going here. So as Tim uh, Lee Brenner, well, I have to pronounce his name or a correct, uh, Tim Brenner Lee, and he's the inventor of the WWW <laughs> protocol. Uh, so all the internet related things, uh, yeah, comes from this guy. And he also uh, shared it with the rest of the world, uh, so everyone can use his protocol and build on uh, on that. And more from local space, who, who does who knows this person? Only one. <laughs> okay. And it's Juan uh, Robgeip, and um, he's one of the first founders of pub public internet. Um, and he kind of introduced uh, internet, for, at least for me. And at first, internet was a text prompt, and later on, uh, you get a very graphical interface, what uh, Tim uh, invented. Um, and he's also very um, about security, privacy, and that kind of uh, things. So, so all these hackers are very important, uh, and they brought us many things. So I already mentioned the internet, um, privacy, encryption is also mo mostly from that kind of uh, persons. Uh, yeah, you have to have a certain mindset to think up that kind of things and then share it with the public so everyone can use it and it is not a commercial product or you have to buy licenses for that. Um, so without that protocols, um, yeah, it would be very hard to build your own website or build your own yeah, infrastructure that way. Uh, so what is the mindset of the hackers? Uh, first of all, they are very curious, um, and especially the ethical hackers. Uh, if they go browse to a website and uh, they see uh, they do something and they see an error message, uh, normal, normal people will say, well, okay, whatever, and clicks, clicks it away. Uh, the ethical hacker will think, hmm, this is interesting, and try to find out what is the, um, yeah, the reason behind the error and maybe uh, find some way to use it. And, and a real ethical hacker uh, also reports to the company, say, hey, you have a problem with your site, maybe you have to fix it. Um, and to know what's going wrong, you have to know the system. You have to know the, how the browser works, how the programming language works, how the database works, all got that kind of things, and not only on a basic level, but really deep into the site. Um, they are very critical. Uh, so we just had a talk about, about uh, Alex on the coupling with uh, AI. Uh, he mentioned also some negative things about AI. Uh, so all the new technology is kind of shiny new things, and uh, most nerds geeks think, oh, that's nice, <laughs> let's play with it. Uh, but an, uh, a hacker will also think, okay, I can do now this. Uh, can I use it in another way to do harm? Uh, so and that is also yeah a kind of mindset that's not uh, for everyone. So uh, that's important. You can think that way. Yeah, already about uh, told about sharing information. So all the things they hackers make is also part of the open source community. Uh, Going to talk a little bit later about that more. And they are creative with finding solutions. So uh, combine things that are not related to each other and then find a solution that way. And they are very playful with rules, so it does exactly what stays here, uh, and applying the rules that is set there. And a mono, mono bike, I, I don't know how you call it officially, but it's not on the list of uh, what is not forbidden, so yeah, you can use it, right? So I already mentioned open source, and have to check the time. Um, and open source is kind of, uh, who, who knows open source at, at all? Okay, that's more than expected. So for the people who doesn't know, open source is a kind of way of software development, uh, software development and can also be used for hardware. And in a basic, uh, you say, I, I designed something, um, and can do, th do two things with it, or you keep it on your own and try to sell it to other companies. Or you're going to share it with the rest of the world. Um, and if someone has uh, an uh, improvement for their product, he can download the source code, uh, change a little bit, 
and then upload it again and say, hey, uh, you had some problem here, you had a bug here, or I added some functionality to the software, and now you can uh, share it with the rest of the world. Uh, so that way, the software is going to be improved uh, over time. Um, if, I, uh, if you do it commercially, uh, no one can see what's inside the uh, source code, so you have to hope that the, the uh, way of development is kind of right. There's no mistakes in it, and if there's a mistake, yeah, you can tell the company, hey, if, yeah, if I do this, this, and this, and something goes wrong, uh, that the company uh, fix it. Um, and with open source, you can just download the source and fix it yourself if you want to, and if you have the knowledge. Uh, so there's a very, uh, very important uh, difference. Um, if you do that, uh, not every software developer has to reinvent the wheel. Um, so there's a lot of um, uh, websites you can uh, use as a blog. Uh, I think WordPress is uh, one of the most famous ones. Uh, that's an open source product. Um, you have also commercial versions of uh, that kind of uh, uh, software. But as far as I know, they are less popular than WordPress. So, um, yeah, and if someone uh, uh, fixing a fault in the WordPress is available for everyone, um, and also um, if there is something uh, wrong with it, uh, because many people can look into the source code uh, and see what happens behind the screen, uh, that way you can also prevent bugs, and especially with uh, very critical software, like for security or uh, encryption, it's very important that many people look to the source code and see um, if everything is okay, yes or no. Um, and there's this free software, and yeah, English is free as uh, one word, but two meanings. Uh, there's free as in gratis, but it's also free as uh, free in speech. So gratis is yeah for zero dollars or what you want to call it, uh, but the free freedom to alter or change it or to download it is also a very important part of the open source community, and uh, that is, is uh, that is, is also free is kind of byproduct, is, but but that's not the aim itself. So these are kind of uh, uh, big. Uh, open source products, uh, so I already uh, mentioned Linux, uh, LibreOffice, kind of uh, 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 Office, Microsoft Office alternative. It is free, you don't have to pay for it. Um, in my opinion, it is even as good as uh, uh, Microsoft Office. Um, yeah, so why not use it? Uh, the Corona model was also open source, uh, so that was the first open source project for the uh, government, uh, and it was kind of be because the hackers had a lot of comments on the, the, the way some things uh, were going. And uh, at mo one moment, uh, someone in the government says, said, fine, hey, if you know that it's so good, why don't you do gonna try it for, you for yourself? So that kind of happened accidentally because there was a lot of time pressure and they had to do a lot of things. And if you do it in a normal way, you have to do an ARM stating. <laughs> uh, and it takes a long time uh, to get that uh, up and running. And uh, yeah, if you ju just throw a bunch of hackers in a, s a small room, uh, they can be very, very uh, produ productive. So, uh, One other part of uh, what hackers find in interesting and uh, is important to them is kind of the privacy part. Now, I already mentioned that, that I did a uh, Wi-Fi track in here. Um, but um, I always find it kind of strange that we have to fight for the privacy, because privacy is an, uh, yeah, a, a human right. So it should be more natural that uh, there is uh, that if if something new is introduced, that the privacy is also considered and taken care of. Um, yeah, nowadays a lot of data is uh, stored, uh, even on your mobile phone. Uh, and most times there's no really e a simple uh, option to turn off everything. You have to go in settings and maybe uh, check 10 marks or even more. Um, yeah, that should be different. Um, but nowadays, thankfully, uh, we have the GDPR, uh, and slowly we're going back to the right uh, direction. Uh, still a long way to go, uh, but uh, at least I see that companies kind of think about privacy and what they store and how they store it. 
So that's a that's uh, yeah, step in the right direction. Uh, and in the past, I organized a privacy cafe. Uh, and there's a uh, little bit of explanation for what kind of social media do you use, um, how do you use it in the safe way, uh, how do you, do you use encryption, uh, that kind of things. So, um, encryption, 10 minutes, okay. Um, encryption is kind of, uh, for most people, magic. And encryption itself is um, yeah, mathematics. Uh, and some politician then thinks, yeah, mathematics, you can just alter things uh, without uh, breaking encryption. Yeah, that's not the way encryption works. Uh, just like, like if you are going to be dead, you're going to be dead or not dead, not something in between. And politicians sometimes think, yeah, you can invent something in between. Um, yeah, that, that is not the way. Um, so... Um, Every, I think everyone uses here at least WhatsApp or uh, Telegram is a bad example, or Signal. Uh, they all have encry encryption. Um, so that makes it possible to uh, exchange private uh, messages back and forth. Uh, signal do does it the best because it doesn't uh, keep track uh, who, you, who, who you're going to signal to. Uh, WhatsApp try, uh, yeah, it's fa fra from Facebook, so they probably try to see uh, what you're going to message and to who. They still can not see inside the message, but they know to who you sent the message. So by that, you can make a social chart for who's your friends and stuff like that, and that can be very in interesting for Facebook, of course. Um, who knows about the crypto war in the 90s, 1990s? Only one. <laughs> okay. Uh, so in the 1990s, there was uh, the first proposal from the government to implement, to, uh, implement a special phone uh, that should be have uh, a built-in backdoor. And uh, from there, there was a discussion: uh, Yeah, why sh sh you should you do that at uh, at all? Yeah, and the government says: Yeah, we want to listen in in uh, private uh, phone conversations, uh, but only if we need it. Um, but if you build something like that, yeah, at first it's only the government, and then maybe the police, and then maybe, maybe your municipality. So you build th something that's always um, somehow uh, broken already by design then. Um, and that's a bad way, because you never know uh, who's going to have the yeah, special key to listen in, in your phone conversations or emails or whatever. Um, so if you want to use encryption in the right way, you should have, uh, yeah, uh, in, in a way that no one can break the encryption in itself. Um, yeah, and that's hard to explain to some people. Yeah, and uh, if you're gonna uh, forbid encryption, uh, if you do, if you even can do that, uh, because sometimes it goes up uh, again, and there's gonna be a discussion about it. And then it's the same conclusion, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do it, and then 10 years later they have the same discussion again. Um, but if you're going to forbid it, um, the, the results will be that only the good citizens cannot use encryption, and the bad guys, because they don't have to uh, listen to any uh, law, they can use encryption. So you, uh, you get exactly what you don't want to have. So that's also the reason why you don't want to use it, don't want to forbid it. Um, hackers also f find very important to own the device they have. And with own, I also mean that you can alter it, to change it, to install your own software in, on it if you want to, to install on different OS if you want to. And uh, more and more, uh, that kind of devices are locked down uh, with all kind of yeah, nonsense uh, software stuff to uh, prevent you to repair it or to upgrade it and stuff like that. So that's kind of pity that uh, yeah, the, the, the companies want to go to, to that side. And especially uh, Apple is very famous about it. If you have two iPhones that are the same, and you swap out the camera, the camera doesn't work uh, right because it's somehow it's just tied to one phone and not to the type of phone. Uh, and that makes it very hard to uh, repair uh, your own phone, if even if you want to and want to legally do, 
uh, the, the, yeah, the, the, uh, the Apple in this case can say, yeah, you can buy uh, a new camera, but you have to repair it in the Apple store, and it's going to be very expensive because we have to do all kind of things to get it up and running again. Um, yeah, I, I don't like that kind of things, although I uh, own an iPhone, so. <laughs> um, so there's a little bit about right to repair and the uh, uh, freedom of uh, to tinker. So where can you find our kind of persons? So this is the map of the world. So there's, uh, especially in Europe, a lot of uh, hackerspaces in uh, America and the rest of the world a little bit spread out. Um, if I look in Europe, it looks like this. And if I look in Netherlands, hey, I recognize that yellow one. <laughs> Uh, so in Netherlands, there's kind of uh, b uh, around 15 hackerspaces. Um, we know each other, and they have all kind of the same uh, global objective, but they do it all uh, a little bit differently. So if you like one hackerspace, it could be, uh, uh, could be that you uh, don't feel uh, at home at another one. So this, yeah, you have to, you have to test them all. <laughs> um, so if I... I'm the founder of Tuglab, and there's a hackerspace here in Enschede. We started in 2011, so uh, we're almost uh, 11 years uh, old now. Um, we have now a broodplaats subsidy, so we have a grant from the government, uh, from the municipality, to make a nice uh, place from it. Uh, and right now we're on the Marstene, um, it's a little bit outside the city. Um, we would like to be more in the city center, but yeah, it's also about what you pay and uh, stuff like that. So th for us, th there was the best place. Uh, we have uh, upstairs uh, the place where you can sit with laptops, with a lot of uh, LED lids. Uh, we also have uh, famous uh, visitors, uh, like uh, the guy from, uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's not on my paper even. Uh, and uh, we have also an, uh, a workplace, um, and we continue to improve our space. And um, yeah, um, and we do, uh, um, and it's not the Tuckelab Stichting that improves the place, but it's uh, mainly the members. Uh, and if some members say, hey, I want to have that device, uh, we're going to try to collect the money for it, and they try to organize it uh, for themselves. So it's kind of bottom-up organization uh, that way. Um, so we also have a uh, laser cutter and bordure machine, in embroidery machine, uh, that's not correct, and uh, 3D printers. Um, and they mainly used for the members itself, but if you think, ah, I want to make something small, or I want to try it for one time, yeah, you're welcome to come uh, to our place. And uh, yeah, we try to help you. Um, and that, uh, the we also have hacker campaigns. Uh, so last year there was a, a big one in the Netherlands called MCH. Uh, there were around 4,000 hackers international together. And we do there uh, what we do in hacker space, but yeah, a little bit bigger. Uh, with a little bit bigger tents. And um, yeah, it's kind of the same atmosphere and the same settings you have there, but then in the open air with lots of, of people. Uh, and it's always nice, and this year there's going to be one in Germany, uh, and there's also the CCC Congre Congress every year uh, between uh, Christmas and uh, New Year. Uh, so that's all events where, you go, where we go to, and yeah, if you think, oh, that's nice, I want to go join you, uh, feel free to join. So, uh, What we do with Tuckelab, uh, yeah, we have every Tuesday, we are open for everyone, so if you have a Tuesday evening and think, ah, I have nothing to do, uh, feel free to drop by. Um, if you want to have a, make an appointment, it's also uh, possible. Uh, once every two weeks uh, on the Thursday, you can uh, book a ticket, and then you have an appointment, and then someone shows you around and uh, introduces you in the club. Uh, we have monthly uh, uh, Cyber Saturdays. And it can be a workshop or a lecture or yes, just something interesting. And the next one is uh, with the 3D slicer, uh, uh, Prusa slicer. 
Uh, OpenSCAD is the next one, uh, and for next year, we have some other things uh, planned, also le lectures. Um, so if you are a little bit in technology, privacy, that kind of things, uh, check our agenda or subscribe to our newsletter and you get uh, updates and yeah, see if you want to join. Um, yeah, I already mentioned the hacker campaigns, so we go to that kind of events. We also so go sometimes go to the uh, to Maker Fair, like in uh, Eindhoven or in uh, uh, Groningen. Um, yeah, so if there's something going on technical related, uh, there are always some people interested, and then we go by one car or something like that, depending on how much people. So I have 10 seconds less. So we who has a very very quick question. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I guess you are also working on projects with, with the people at Packerspace. Mm -hmm. uh, can you mention one uh, inspiring project? Uh, one, uh, one thing there's uh, two people working on this kind of pick and place uh, robot. That's for the very small electronics. Uh, and you need kind of 3D parts uh, to pick up a part and then put it on the right uh, place and then you're uh, going to need a reflow oven to finish that. Um, the space itself is in one big project, so uh, we also have a home autom automation, um, and we have a lot of sensors. Um, and uh, th one th thing that I last do is, if it is the first Tuesday of the month, uh, and the door inside opens and closes after a certain time, it's going to play a sound from uh, you have to bring out the trash. Uh, uh, so everything is connected in our space, uh, and we like to yeah bring things together. So that's some examples of projects. But mo well, some people have uh, their own projects, and some people uh, they collabor collaborate on their projects. So any more questions? Yeah. Uh, so uh, from this um, uh, AI that uh, that is growing, is mm -hmm. the GPT uh, thing that is uh, currently uh, growing. Could help. It doesn't really have to speak out of the truth, right? And it's difficult to train it as well. Yeah, yeah but, but, uh, but in general, the AI, uh, I see it as a chance and as a threat. And depending on what you can do, you can explain both ways. Uh, but, but if you want to, uh, for social engineering, I think it's important to have kind of a script what you are and what your background is and stuff like that. Yeah, I think uh, uh, and GTP can help you to make up things for um, for background story. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. More questions? Yeah. yeah. You mentioned uh, privacy. Yep. Yeah. Um, can you give us a, a top of the iceberg of what you think should be next steps? I mean, you said GDPR is coming, but it's not going far enough. No. Um, what is your what? What are your main concerns, and what should be the next step to do? Uh, I, I think, in general, uh, many people should more um, n know about privacy in, in itself. And uh, m most people f very easily share their own personal data or give it away for free to get a login and then download one file or something like that. Uh, so that I think that is the most important part. Uh, I have a question to your all audience who use a password manager. So who didn't raise the hand, please use a password manager. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it can, can be very pr practical. Uh, and, and I think uh, the legal part is a slow process and we, we have the first step. And yeah, there has to be more steps to get it there where, where I would be really happy. So but that is... Education. Hmm? The main thing is education of consumers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. More questions? No? I will be hanging around, so if you have uh, other questions, feel free to nudge me. And I will uh, thank you for your time, and uh, maybe uh, sometime at, at the club. So. <laughs>